Ah, there she is, Tony. There she is. Uh, great to have you as we continue this conversation. So um, you you probably heard and saw the story about how we got to this point. And and I guess the question, you know, why now? Why this moment? Um, why did we decide to sort of have this commitment march on Washington now? I think it's a it's a a a um, conflation of a lot of separate events, right? So um, the clip that we just saw started us a couple of years back, but we could actually push even further back than that. We could push it back to George Stinney. We could push it back to Eleanor Bumpers, right? We could push it back much further. We could push it back to Emmett Till. Um, and so we had this moment where the, the violence against black and brown people in this country collided with a pandemic that had people at home home watching television. And so there was this moment where that violence coupled with this captive audience gave birth to a movement um, that, that we are seeing play out in the streets right now. Dean Hutchins, uh, we talk about this moment. Um, a lot of the young activists that we talked to, some people who were protesting in the 60s, uh, going back that far, say this feels like a, more than a moment, it feels like a turning point where some change really can happen. Do, do you share that belief? Absolutely do. So the young people who are out in the streets right now give us all energy. I think for a lot of people who have been in this fight for years and years and years, there is a sense of exhaustion. There is a sense of we've been here before and then we see what these young people are doing we see the sustained protest. We see people out in the streets, despite a pandemic that is threatening people's lives, they want their voices to be heard and they give us all energy. They are creating coalitions across races, across genders. Um, we, you know, exactly what you just talked about, the, the, the um, LGBTQ community, women, people of color, we're just seeing so many movements coalesce around this real craving for justice. I think what we're also seeing, Dean Hutchins, is in America, we have to bear witness to something to move, right? During the civil rights era, it was those images, the graphic images of African Americans standing and being brutalized uh, by the, the police state that was how things were carried out in this country. You move forward all these decades and we're bearing witness to uh, the violence again perpetrated against black lives, men and women, and we don't even talk about the children who are witnessing this. There's something about bearing witness in this country that makes us move and mobilize. Right. Right, I think that's exactly right. So it is very easy if we can treat the violence that is happening as something that is happening against the other, right? If we can dehumanize it, if we can decouple it from our own existence, when we are forced to bear witness to it, it is much harder to ignore. And when you hear the voices of the families that are left in the aftermath, you know, Jacob Blake's sister yesterday or the day before yesterday spoke so poignantly about their loss, their family's loss. His mother spoke so poignantly about the loss. His father humanized him and spoke about the fact that his son who was shot in the back seven times is now handcuffed in his hospital bed. Um, when we see those voices, it really humanizes the pain of communities that have experienced this for far too long. And of course, today I heard from also the father of, of Jacob Blake talking today on another network. And he also talked about the eight year old son, the oldest son who witnessed this, who said, why did the police shoot my daddy? That that's what this young person is going to be left with. Uh, there's so many other uh, places I wished we could go with this conversation, but our, uh, we'll hopefully get back to you at some point. Dean Hutchins, thank you for adding your voice to this broader conversation.